Okay, in previous class we discussed the concept of atomic structure and modules of atoms, Zeeman effect, Stark effect, black body of radiations, spectrum, line spectrum of hydrogen atoms, etc. In this module, we have to learn the concept of quantum numbers. Just we glance that Bohr's atomic model, the electron in an atom surrounding the nucleons at particular energy levels. These energy levels are called what? Orbits. Each orbit contains sub-energy levels and these sub-energy levels have specific orientation and are called the orbitals. This atomic orbital describes the regions of space in which there is a high probability of finding the electron. In a multi-electron atoms, means more than one electron atom, that is what? Multi-electron atoms. All the electrons are distributed to different main energy levels, sub-energy levels and oriented in different directions. The particular electron in such atom is identified using three quantum numbers. The four quantum numbers introduced in order to distinguish the pairing of electrons. That is what? Spin quantum number. The numbers which identify the state of an electron specify the energy associated with it and its location around the nucleus are called quantum numbers. These numbers are used to designate and distinguish electron in an orbital. There are four quantum numbers, namely the principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number and spin quantum number. The atomic orbitals can be completely described using a set of three quantum numbers means principal, azimuthal and magnetic quantum numbers. These quantum numbers partly describe the electron in a particular orbit. In order to completely specify an electron in an atom, a fourth quantum number is called spin quantum number has been introduced. The principal quantum number is denoted by the symbol is n and can have the value of whole number 1, 2, 3, 4 up to infinity. This principal quantum number specifies the main energy level means orbit of an electron and the size of the orbit. If n is equal to 1 called first energy level that is Kn n is equal to 2 second energy level that is M shell n is equal to 3 that is third energy level that is n shell.
Yes, we have to change here. N is equal to 1. That is A shell. N is equal to 2. That is L shell. N is equal to 3. That is M shell. N is equal to 4. That is N shell. This quantum number is labeled as principal. Because the values of refining two quantum numbers are defined only after the defining value of n. All the orbits that have the same value of n are said to be in the same shell or level. For hydrogen atom with n is equal to 1, the electron is in its ground state. If the electron is in that n is equal to 2 orbital, it is in the excited state. The total number of orbitals for a given n value is equal to 2. The simple examples. What are the significance of this principal quantum numbers? The principal quantum number. gives the energy of an electron. All orbits that have the same value of n must possess the same energy. The number of orbitals present in a particular energy level n is equal to the value of n square. But the first energy level here 1, n square is equal to 1, energy level 2, n is equal to 2, that is n square is equal to 2 square, that is equal to 4, that is the third energy level, n is equal to 3, has n square is equal to 9, has 9 orbitals. The total number of electrons occupied in a particular energy level is equal to 2n square. If n is equal to 1, we can accommodate only 2 electrons. If n is equal to 2, we can accommodate 8 electrons. n is equal to 3, we accommodate 18 electrons. N is equal to 4, we accommodate 4 square. Here, 2 into 4 square means 32 electrons. In that second energy level, N is equal to 2, maximum we can accommodate only 8 electrons. In N is equal to 3, maximum accommodate 18 electrons. In N is equal to 4, accommodate 32 electrons. What is the conclusion of this? The electrons are accommodated in any atomic orbital is maximum is 2n square. The next quantum number is azimuthal quantum number. Azimuthal quantum number that is also called subsidiary quantum number or sub energy level. This azimuthal quantum number is also called the angular momentum quantum number or secondary quantum number that is denoted by the symbol A small n. This quantum number specifies the sub energy level or sub orbitals present in a particular energy level n. It also specifies the shape of an orbital. Thus, the secondary quantum number divides the shells into smaller groups of orbitals called subshells or sublevels. The azimuthal quantum number L can have the value 0 to n minus 
because that n is equal to what n minus n into n minus one, not uh, n minus one. Here n is equal to one. The L value is equal to zero. The ray case shell does not contain any subenergy levels. N is equal to two. The ray one value. The ray L shell two subenergy levels denoted by zero and one. N is equal to three. L is equal to three minus one. What we are getting zero one two. This means that M shells. Has three sub energy levels denoted by zero, one, and usually a letter code is used to identify and to avoid confusion with N. Corresponds to the letters that is S P D F Z H. The sub shells with N is equal to one and L is equal to zero. Is the first subshell with n is equal to two and l is equal to one is the two subshells. N is equal to two and l is equal to one. That is two s subshells. N is equal to three and l is equal to two. That is what three subshells. And n is equal to three and l is equal to one. That is three p subshells. Here. n is equal to 3 and l is equal to 0 that is what 3s subsets the value of s also has the slight effect on the energy of subsets the energy of the subsets increases with l what are the significance of this Azimuthal quantum numbers. This Azimuthal quantum number it explains the angular momentum of an electron. It is used to classify different quantum mechanical states on the basis of angular momentum. It gives shape of an orbital. The magnitude of L denotes the energy levels of the orbitals. The next quantum numbers that is magnetic quantum numbers. The magnetic quantum number denoted by the symbols m and can have the values of plus l and minus. This quantum number arises because m affect the energy of the electron in an extremely externally applied magnetic field. Thus, the magnetic quantum number specifies the orientation of orbitals. In a space of a given energy and shape L, the quantum number divides the subshells into their degeneracy levels. The orbitals which have the same level but different orientation in space are called degenerate orbitals. The total degeneracy of the orbital is equal to m is equal to two l plus one. For l is equal to zero, m is equal to plus or minus l that is also zero. M is equal to one only. This means that only one is orbital. No degeneracy. In that, l is equal to one. Yam is equal to plus or minus l. That value is minus one zero plus one. Yam is equal to two l plus one. Here three. This means 
there are three p orbitals means p orbital is triplet degenerates they are denoted by px py pz for n is equal to 2 m is equal to plus or minus l that is equal to minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 2 And the m is equal to 2l plus 1 to derive this means there are 5d orbitals is pentad degenerate. They are denoted by dxy, dyz, dzx, dx square minus y square and dz and so on. From this. magnetic quantum numbers as the name suggests tells you about behavior of atom in magnetic field it gives the most important significance orientation of orbital angular momentum gives the energy of different orientation there are three quantum number describes the properties of the orbitals in an atom thus we can use the same quantum numbers to describe the orbitals of an atom an additional quantum number is needed to describe the property of the electron in many electron atoms the additional quantum number is called what spin quantum number like each charge spin is an intrinsic property of the electron and electron spin becomes important when more than one electron is present in an orbit finally spin quantum numbers we just imagine this is orbital uh, any orbital accommodate only two electrons with opposite spin the forward is indicates that plus of the downward itself it is what negative of the spin number denotes the symbols it has two values plus of and minus of This quantum number specifies the orientation of the spin axis of an electron. An electron can spin in only one two direction that is clockwise and anticlockwise. Thus each electron in an atom is described completely by a set of four quantum numbers. the first three describes its orbitals and the fourth describes its spins this is all the concept of the spin quantum sorry quantum number this is a very important question general asking in that five more questions there are four quantum numbers are there the principal quantum number it explains the shape of the orbital azimuthal quantum number it explains the shape of the orbital the magnetic quantum number it explains the possible orientation of an electron in an axis the spin quantum number it explains the what either it is a clockwise or anti clockwise directions of that electrons next shape of orbital the orbital symbols are associated with the angular momentum quantum number which is assigned an interior value from 
zero to three. The corresponds to yes. One corresponds to zero corresponds to yes. One corresponds to two. Two corresponds to three, etc. These orbital symbols are given to group of lines originally noted in the spectra of the all polymetals. These lines groups are called sharp, principal, diffuse, and fundamental. Now we are going to discuss which what is the shape of the S orbital. With the help of this azimuthal quantum number and magnetic quantum number and the S orbitals have unique orientations in space. Thus, S orbitals correspond to spherical in shape with the atomic nucleus as at a center. For every value of n is one s yes orbital. That is, orbitals are present in all principal energy levels. Its radius depends on the value of n. As the value of n increases, the size of the s yes orbital is also increases. Thus, as no nodal plane, the shape of the s orbitals as shown in the figure. Not the shape of p orbital. The p orbitals, azimuthal quantum number is one, magnetic quantum number is minus one zero plus one. And three orbitals they have three orientation in space. The three orbital corresponds to dumbbell shape, and with the atomic nucleus at its center. The p orbitals is having two lobes. Directed in opposite sides of the nucleus, the p orbitals oriented in three different directions along x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis of the usual coordinate systems. These orbitals are designated as p x, p y, and p z. Just we see the diagram of this p orbital. It is dumbbell shape. Next, we move on to the discussion on the concept of shape of the orbitals. The orbitals azimuthal number is two. The magnetic quantum number minus two minus one zero plus one plus two, and d orbitals have five orientation in space. Thus, d orbital corresponds to a double dumbbell shape with the atomic nucleus at its center and one dumbbell ring. Do not shape. The orbitals has two nodal planes. The shape of the orbitals are shown in that figure. This is the shape of the. Y Z. 
this is x y this is z x d z square and d x square minus y square these are all the different shapes of d orbital next we'll move on to the shapes of f orbital the f orbitals azimuthal quantum number is 3 and magnetic quantum number minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 Zero plus one plus two plus three. Here, yes, yes orbitals have seven orientation in space. Yes, orbital as complex shape with atomic nucleus as its center and as three nodal planes. I think you know the concept of shapes of orbital. The s orbital is in that spherical in shape. The p orbital is in that dumbbell shape. In d orbital is a double dumbbell shape, and f orbital is a triple dumbbell shape. What is shielding or screening effect and effective nuclear charge? the quantum model suggested that electrons are surrounding around the nucleus in a circular orbit at different intervals of time or different distances since nucleus is positive charge because the nucleus it consists of protons and neutron the proton is having positive charges in that neutron they do not have any charge in that nucleus surrounding the electrostatic force of attraction between electron and nucleus gas stable this attractive force on each electron in an atom is different size since electrons are circulating at different intervals of distance from the nucleus just we consider here electron in the first shell experiences greater attraction than the electrons in that second shell which in turn experiences greater attractions than the electrons in the third shell and so on this is due to two reasons as the distance between nucleus and the main energy levels increases the force of attractions between nucleus and electron was less means the attractions on that electron decreases the electron present in the shells between nucleus and outer shell are called intervening electrons the electrons in the outer shell are called repelled or shielded by electrons in the inner shell this repulsion counteracts the attractions caused by the positive nuclear charge that is represented in that next figure because of the presence of intervening electrons the force of attractions between that nucleus and the outermost electron is reduced the reductions or decrease in the force of attraction because of presence of intervening electrons is called shielding effect or screening effect the actual nuclear charge acting on the outermost electron is less than the nuclear charge which is equal to the atomic number of atoms the symbol for 
एफेक्टिव न्यूक्लियर चार्ज इज जेड स्टोर Thus, the effective nuclear charge can be calculated by using the equation Z effective is equal to Z minus C. What are the factors that affect the shielding constant and effective nuclear charge? Yes, so many factors are affecting the shielding constant and effective nuclear charge. some of the factors or some of the relevant factors we are going to express here the number of intervening electrons and size of the atom this are very important the number of intervening electron increases the value of shielding constant and the value of shielding constant increases the effective nuclear charge decreases that is uh, reciprocal not proportionality in proportionality has thus the number of intervening electrons increases effective nuclear charge is decreases as move down the group in the periodic table the number of intervening electron is increases as the number of intervening electron increases shield effect and and effective nuclear charge is decreases that's in any group downward effective nuclear charge decreases what is the size of the atom it affect the shielding constant and effective nuclear charge as the size of atom increases the force of attraction by nucleus for outer most electrons or shell decreases thus with increase in size the effective nuclear charge decreases as we move down the group in the periodic table atomic size increases and hence effective nuclear charge decreases as we move from left to right across the period the size of atom decreases and hence the effective nuclear charge increases thus across the period as atomic number increases effective nuclear charge is also increases next concept the status rules that is status rules is to study the shielding electron some empirical rules to calculate the shielding or screening of various electrons present in different orbitals of an atom or anion thus the nuclear charge on an atom or ion is less than the actual nuclear charge and that and can easily calculated by using the following equation effective nuclear charge is equal to z minus sigma where sigma is equal to shielding constant the effective nuclear change means a charge means the net positive charge which affect the attractions of outer electron from the nucleus of polyelectronic atom the term effective is used because the shielding electrons prevent the attraction of outer orbitals electrons of an atom 
the stator rules are applicable for the calibrating values shielding constant and effective nuclear charge on an electron in an atom or ion the screening effect or shielding effect a constant calculated with the help of that stator's rule just we consider here one s 2s 2p 3s 3p 3d 4s 4p 3d 4f 5f 5p the electrons in a group behind that electron under consideration contributes nothing to shielding or screening effect for the electron in ns group sigma is calculated by the following contributions of other electrons for example here 0.35 of each electron in the same group 0.85 each electron in n minus 1 cell 1.00 of each electron in an inertia for electron in ng or nf group sigma is calculated by the following contributions of other electrons 0.35 of each electron in the same group one of each electron in that lower group for one of the two electrons present in one s orbital of any atom the contributions of other electron is 0.3 these are the calculations of that screening effect and effective nuclear charge 4s consider manganese copper potassium for manganese atomic number 25 electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d5 calculating sigma by applying stator's rule first we have to take on for that 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p 3d 4s 4p just we consider accommodate the electrons here that s orbital p orbitals and d orbitals we have to separate it here we consider next copper copper is also first we have to write that electronic configuration next sigma by applying this stator's rule what is the that effective here 3.73 next we consider for that potassium atom electronic configuration Here one s, two s, three p, four s one. We have to change that values of this. Here ten and ten. Here eighteen electrons into zero point five. Here zero point three five into c. With the help of this latest formula, we have to calculate the effect. These are the chlorine atoms. We have to calculate Z effective by applying that stator's rule. What we are getting is six point one. In that Cl minus one five point seven five. Calculate Z effective for the lost electrons of sodium and Na plus ion. The electronic configuration of the sodium is one H two two H two two P six three S one. Here two electrons here, eight electrons here, single electrons. Just we have to calculate. Find what we are getting. Two point two zero. The electron configurations of that sodium. First we have to write that sodium in a plus means to remove one electron. In a plus means. remove one electron 
Power plant that is later so we have to find. Similarly for that copper etc. What is the Pauli's exclusion principle? In that Pauli's exclusion principle just we consider it is 1s orbital here, 2s orbital here, 2p orbital. 2py, 2pz, 2px. In any atomic orbital we can accommodate only two electrons with opposite spin. That is called what? Pauli's exclusion principle. In an atom, no two electrons can have the same set of value all the four quantum numbers. This means that no more than two electrons can occupy the same orbital and that two electrons in the same orbital must have the opposite spins. Because an electron spin it creates a magnetic field which can be oriented in one of two directions. For two electrons in the same orbital, the spin must be possessed to each other, or the spin are said to be what? Paired. These substances are not attracted to magnets or said to be diamagnetic. And electrons are paired, that is called what? A paramagnet. In that orbital is having single electrons or the raised paramagnetic In that orbital is having paired electrons or the that is called what diamagnet Now I am going to conclude that first unit from this atomic theory has evolved since an ancient times. The hypothesis of grid scalars has become the basis of analysis by scientists. They have done a lot of discoveries and theories regarding that the atom. Moreover, it derives from Greek words like atoms which means that indivisible. All nature is made up of tiny units called atoms. This was first proposed by Lucifs and Democrates in that 5th century that all nature is made up of tiny units called atoms. The English chemist John Dalton subsequently made on the great notions of atoms in 1808. He portrayed the matter is made up of atom which are small indivisible particles. He also proposed that while atoms of one atom element are identical, they are totally different from those that make up other elements. In 1904, English physicist Joseph J. Thompson proposes the plum pudding theory, individual atom. He does so after discovering that electrons by using that Rutherford experiment, in that Goldie's experiment, we are going to express that the structure or designing of these atomic models. Later that two discovery days of this black body of radiation, photoelectric effect, line spectrum of hydrogen, etc. and discuss the concept of these quantum numbers or introduced to describe the trajectory and movement of an electron in an atom. The quantum numbers of all the electrons in a given atom when combined must completely be the Schrodinger equation. The set of numbers used to describe the position and 
energy of the electron in an atom are called quantum numbers. There are four quantum numbers, namely the principal quantum number, it explains the shape, azimuthal quantum number, it explains the shape, principal is explains the size, magnetic quantum number, possible orientation, and spin quantum number, electrons are accommodated. Here they mentioned some keywords, effective nuclear charge, shielding, Zeeman effect, principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, magnetic quantum number, spin quantum number, orbital, Pauli's exclusion principle, etc. These are all some references for study. These are all these self-understood questions here by explained Dalton's theory, flung funding model, Rutherford model of atomic model. Discuss the failure of classical physics with respect to black body of radiation, heat capacity, variation, photoelectric effect and line spectrum of hydrogen atom etc. These are all important questions they mentioned in that. Thank you.